First of all, let's look at running costs. Because energy prices recently, as we've all noticed, have shot up quite rapidly, in fact, £200 a year would take 75 years to pay back, which both paid for condensing boilers to be installed and not condense, considering the £10 billion paid for gas and oil exploration to foreign companies every single year. As mentioned in our video on the feasibility of hydrogen, or the lack of feasibility, we are hydrogen boiler installers. In fact, we're the UK's number one hydrogen fuel cell boiler installer. But I hope that you can trust us when I say we're not going to do this video with any bias at all. In fact, we do actually install heat pumps as well, as well as commercial boilers, normal domestic gas boilers. So I like to think our opinion's pretty well rounded. And in this video, we're going to explore what seems to be a pretty ugly future for renewable heating and what we could potentially do about it. There's two main things to look at when we're looking at the cost of heat pumps. That's the cost to you as the end consumer for running and installation costs. And then there's more kind of the public purse or societal cost if we're going to uh, give out grants to put these things in. We're going to cover the cost to you, the consumer, first. Heat pumps for self-build or new builds are no more expensive than a gas boiler, really. You're already having to put in radiators and pipe work. The extra little bit for a heat pump is very minimal, really. Perhaps you're talking about another couple of grand, but nothing in the cost of an overall self-build. And it's likely to pay back pretty quickly, considering how well they should perform uh, if a building is built to current building regulations, which they have to by law. And another cost that we should bear in mind when looking at the cost of a gas installation in a new build versus a heat pump installation is the fact that if you're putting a gas boiler in a new build property, bringing gas to that property could cost you 30 grand. 30 grand is going to easily pay for a heat pump installation. So actually, it's probably much cheaper in most cases to have a heat pump than it is gas boiler in a new build. However, the average person isn't doing a self-build and doesn't have 15 grand laying around for a retrofit heat pump. That's a heat pump that's put in a building that's currently run on gas or a gas boiler. And compared to the, what, two and a half grand for a typical kind of boiler swap, or the up to eight grand for a boiler swap and system upgrade, 15 grand is a lot of money. Hopefully the government will do something to help us with this. Now, despite people saying the more people that get in and start installing heat pumps, the more the price is gonna come down, that 15K is very unlikely to really budge as the vast majority of work is putting in pipe and installing radiators. The same thing plumbers have been doing for 50, 60, 70 years. That 15K is unlikely to reduce. You may get the individual heat pump price down, but that only makes up a small fraction of the overall cost of the job. Most of the cost is in labor and installing radiators. And if they have to start making steel with hydrogen, radiator prices are probably gonna go up. But does that mean it's not a worthwhile investment? Not necessarily if you can afford that initial cost. There's a few other things that also need to be considered. First of all, let's look at running costs. Now, a couple of months back, we did a video specifically on this. I think it's called something like heat pumps versus boilers running cost. We'll put a link to that up there. Here, we essentially show that poor heat pump installations will cost 25% more than an old inefficient boiler and new efficient heat pump systems designed well and installed well will be 32% more efficient or cheaper to run, I should say, than a new A-rated gas boiler. So the answer in that video is, as always, it varies and there's no panacea. In the name of keeping things simple for that video, there were a couple of things that I did leave out though, which really would favor heat pumps quite a lot. First of all, heat pumps can make use of time of use tariffs. This means when there's a low national electricity demand or there's a lot of renewables being fed into the grid, electrical prices can be a lot cheaper, giving you the ability to charge up your cylinder at night, for example. This isn't possible with gas, and it probably won't be possible with hydrogen gas. The other advantage here is that home batteries and solar very quickly make a lot of financial sense. Because energy prices recently, as we've all noticed, have shot up quite rapidly, and solar and battery prices have remained the same, perhaps even slightly come down, the business case for solar and batteries has gone from questionable to kind of a no-brainer, provided you have the upfront capital and space. If you can store that cheaper power to run your heat pump, this is gonna drive down costs even further and also allows you to store free solar power 
driving your costs down even more. All of this places some power back into the hands of the homeowner and makes them less susceptible to energy price hikes, but also helps to balance the grid to save power and in turn CO2. But like I say, also importantly, making heat pumps further cheaper to run. And lastly, as the electrical grid continues to become cleaner and greener, the 22% social and environmental obligation tax for electricity versus the 2% charge for gas should start to rebalance, making electricity relatively cheaper. Now, many people work out how long it's gonna to take to pay back this initial 15Ks worth of investment, but this is gonna take quite a long time if we're only saving, say, an average of 200 pounds a year. In fact, £200 a year would take 75 years to pay back. Let's look at this a little further. Deduct the cost of what you would have spent replacing your boiler with a newer model, and this will bring down your investment needed to be returned, as you'd have had to spend that money anyway. And if you're going to upgrade your older copper cylinder to a new unvented cylinder, you could be looking at 5k there alone. If you're looking at additionally moving things around or upgrading radiators, you could be looking at a further £3,000 to deduct from the payback calculation. Again, as you're going to be spending that money regardless. You'll pretty much need to always do this deduction, as if you've got a new working boiler, the argument for having a heat pump is much, much lower, as the actual act of installing the heat pump itself, manufacturing a heat pump and putting the heat pump in, has embodied carbon that you're going to be releasing. So let's say that you were upgrading your heating system anyway, it needed updating and that was going to cost five grand. Let's take that off the payback calculation because you would have spent that anyway. That brings down your payback to 50 years return on investment. And currently we have the bus or boiler upgrade scheme, which brings down your return investment by another 5K or another 25 years, bringing your return on investment down to 25 years. It doesn't stop there though. The value of the work that you put into your property doesn't just disappear. The value of your property would have increased literally for a couple of reasons. For one, your EPC rating would have increased. EPC standing for Energy Performance Certificate. It's basically a little certificate that says how energy efficient your home is. Second of all, natural gas boilers are effectively being discontinued from 2025 for new builds and 2035 for everything else. If you have a viewing on your property and someone sees an old gas boiler, they may be thinking, well, at some point, I'm going to have to spend 15 grand on swapping that out for a heat pump versus them viewing a property with the work already done. This will clearly reflect on property value. And as the bus scheme is only three years, they may have to pay the whole 15 grand too. So everyone will need to upgrade to a low carbon heat source at some point. Now you might say, ah, well, we can just wait for hydrogen boilers. Well, probably not. If you refer to the video that preludes this, you'll see the enormity of the task of creating enough hydrogen for our homes. We'll pop a link up there. But more importantly is how much more expensive than current natural gas hydrogen for hydrogen boilers almost certainly will be. If someone sees a hydrogen boiler in a home by that point, they'll be looking at it going, well, I don't really want to pay that much money to heat my home. I'd rather save money and put in a heat pump. Hydrogen will be expensive. Even more reason for them to go and find 15k for the heat pump and living through the cost of all the upheaval that involves. Please go back and watch that video if you haven't already. There's going to be lots of uses in the future for hydrogen. Home heating isn't really going to be one. Now, we aren't quite at this point yet, but the closer we get to this point, the more the house prices will reflect this. If your property only increases by 5k once you've installed a heat pump, your insulation is cost neutral. That's provided your running costs are the same or cheaper which as time moves on, training becomes more and more embedded into the industry, heat pump technology improves, insulation improves in properties, and the relative electrical price comes down relative to gas, it's much, much, much more likely that heat pumps will be relatively cheaper to run. The last thing to look at is servicing and repair costs. Now these are roughly 100 to 300 pounds plus VAT for a heat pump service, and ideally required once a year versus roughly 40 to 120 pounds plus VAT for a boiler service, depending on where you live and the quality of the service, which makes quite a big difference. Typically, but not always, a 40 pound service will get you like a 10 minute visit and a quick check over. 120 pounds, they're more likely to spend up to an hour, maybe even an hour and a half, doing a deeper clean and maybe replacing one or two bits. If you have an unvented cylinder as well to service, expect to pay maybe another 20 to 50, 60 pounds to get that serviced also. Now, all heat pump insulations already have an unvented cylinder, so that service is already covered in that 100, 300 pounds plus fat. This cost is much more likely to come down though, 
as more and more engineers train to service heat pumps. The reason it is more expensive is because heat pump engineers are fewer and far between. They have to cover a much wider area and might only get two services done a day. Whereas a boiler engineer could do 10 services in a day. As more and more people are trained, there'll be more engineers serving smaller areas and the cost will be able to come down. It's also not as essential to service a heat pump installation as much it is with a boiler. A service for a heat pump is more about preventative maintenance. A service for a boiler, more about safety. Now, typically, a gas boiler life is around about eight to 12 years. Please remember though, a well-installed boiler on weather compensation will be more like 15 years or even up to 20. And there are a few more parts to go wrong with gas boilers. However, because of the higher volume of gas boilers repaired and installed, parts are cheaper. Heat pumps life should be more like 20 years because they should be well installed, well designed and on weather compensation. If they aren't any of those things, you'll have issues from the get go anyway. There's also much less parts to go wrong and they are known for breaking down less often. However, when heat pumps do go wrong, they are more expensive. One, because of the installer base, which I mentioned earlier. And two, because the parts are fewer and far between, there's less of them manufactured, and the parts that are in there are physically more substantial, it can sometimes just be just as financially sensible to just swap the whole heat pump unit itself, especially if you factor in the warranty of the new unit. However, that won't mean another 15K. The 15K was to get your property heat pump ready. If it's already heat pump ready and you've already got your pipes outside, you might be looking three to 5K, plus controls if you want those replaced. So heat pump retrofit or making things heat pump ready won't really come down that much. Heat pump servicing and repair will. So that's the cost to you as a the consumer. They do vary and it's not straightforward, but what is clear as time moves on and the cost of carbon ever increases, heat pumps make more and more financial sense. But what about the cost to the taxpayer? So it's all very well and good saying about the cost to individuals, but paying 5K per home to have a heat pump via the boiler upgrade scheme over three years does hit the public purse. In fact, that scheme has earmarked 450 million pounds over 90,000 homes. But the question is, what alternative do we have? And until someone creates something absolutely groundbreaking, it really does come down to either doing nothing or waiting for hydrogen. And remember, that groundbreaking technology will have to be cheaper than a heat pump to install, or many people argue cheaper than a boiler to install, have lower carbon, and have lower running costs. And those are three individual challenges to meet. They're not tied together in any way. And on top of those things, you'll have practical things like if it can physically fit in a home, uh, that it doesn't make too much noise, etc. It's highly unlikely and quite possibly something that's outside the capability of humans at the moment. So we could just not do anything. The problem here is, and rightly so, we signed up to the Paris Agreement and later COP26 in Glasgow. If we do nothing, we have contractually signed up to and enshrined in law that we will pay 40 pounds per tonne of excess CO2 emitted. Now, that may not sound like a lot, but the current limit is set to 132 million tonnes of carbon dioxide per year by 2035. In 2021, we produced 425 million tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent. If we carry on at the same trajectory, despite things like the RHI ending, which actually paid more for heat pumps to be installed than the current bus scheme, and despite the fact that the bus scheme is only a three-year scheme, will be on track for an eight billion pound fine. Now, these fines will actually be passed on to our national energy companies, but where do you think they're gonna get that money from? It's a big bill and far more than the 450 million pounds earmarked for the bus scheme. But more importantly than that, if no one did anything, our emissions would increase. That will give increased air pollution and NHS bills, increasing feedback loops, making the limited climate change even more difficult, as well as increasing food pricing, uh, immigration, and all those other lovely things that come with climate change, which will all at least increase that eight billion pound bill a lot further. But still, rather than spending 450 million pounds on putting heat pumps in other people's homes, it seems to some that hydrogen boilers will be a much cheaper alternative to heat pumps. It's pretty much just a replacement of a couple of parts in a standard boiler and most people will be able to afford it without the government grant. But is it that straightforward? 
or there might be a couple of extra additional costs that we should probably weigh in on. So let's put that £450 million for the bus scheme in perspective. The gas grid upgrade necessary for it to safely be able to transport hydrogen is estimated to be around about £130 billion. Pounds. That's 298 times more expensive than the bus scheme. So the reason we need to upgrade the gas line is because of hydrogen embrittlement, which basically means hydrogen gets into the steel that carries our gas, uh, makes it brittle and leak. And because hydrogen is the smallest atom available, it leaks quite easily. Uh, although that can be a bit safer in some ways because it also makes it very light. It rockets to the air at 30, uh, to outer space at 35 miles an hour and assumes it is in the air, it doesn't pull up. Uh, it still does leak easier and it's obviously wasteful. Hydrogen embittlement, it means it can't work with our current gas grid. So the pipes coming into your house need upgrading uh, and, and the main kind of pipes uh, running around need upgrading to be able to carry the hydrogen. And that's where that cost comes from. Also bear in mind, the 130 billion to upgrade the gas main that's the main gas. You still need your gas main to your house change from potentially iron over to uh, PVC or whatever plastic they use to carry the hydrogen. That's going to be a little bit more complicated because every house is different. You're going to have to disrupt your house. So that's going to be a bit more of a challenge and potentially a lot more risk. If we were to increase the bus scheme budget to similar kind of levels, each of those 90,000 homes earmarked for bus scheme would receive 1.45 million pounds each for a heat pump. Alternatively, 8.7 million homes could just get the full 15 grand for a heat pump installation. That's nearly a third of all homes in the UK. Perhaps maybe help the poorest this time or push a bit more towards insulation, which makes properties even more heat pump ready. But what about the electrical grid? Is that got enough capacity in it? Won't we need to upgrade the electrical grid if we're all moving to heat pumps and electric cars? Well, I thought so too, until I dug a little bit further. As explained on an interview on the Fully Charged show, James Kellaway, the Energy Intelligence Manager of the National Grid, that's the guy whose job it is to literally manage the balance of energy in and out of the National Grid, points out that demand has dropped by 20% since 2005 due to upgrades of energy efficient products and a big rollout of LED lighting nationally. Importantly though, it's not about the overall supply and demand, it's the peaks and troughs which are important. And time of use tariffs, these are the tariffs that charge per half hour depending on if there's an abundance of electricity or a lack of electricity in the grid, are helping things further by pushing factories to perform energy efficiency tasks, perhaps at night when energy is a bit cheaper and in oversupply. Homes with hot water heating, car charging and battery charging are also being pushed to charge at night time or times of electrical grid abundance by charging them lower rates. He says there's plenty of capacity in the grid and will be even more so moving forward as all of these measures fall further and further into place. So grid upgrades outside normal maintenance may not really be necessary at all. The efficiency of heat pumps is only ever going to increase for three reasons. Installer training is going to improve, technology is going to get better and the installer base is going to get wider. Gas combustion has pretty much got as far as it's ever going to get at 90% efficiency. Remember that heat pumps are local heat generation. That is, you create the heat on site by extracting out the air or ground. Boilers are just igniting the energy sent down the pipe. You could be even more cynical and say, don't put any money towards heat pumps or hydrogen gas. But the often foreign owned natural gas and oil fossil fuel industries get paid two billion pounds more a year for exploration than the renewable industry gets in the UK. And the natural gas boiler industry has had literally tens or perhaps even hundreds of billions in the form of the eco schemes uh, and the boiler scrappage scheme before that, which both paid for condensing boilers to be installed and not condense, as well as the continued lower environmental and social obligation charge that gas still enjoys, despite now being dirtier than electricity. Plus, as I say, many of the petroleum companies are foreign owned, which directly exports your taxpayers' money every time you turn your heating on. So, considering the running costs of running a hydrogen powered appliance, Considering the cost of upgrading the gas grid to accept hydrogen. Considering the environmental levies that haven't been charged to natural gas. Considering the 10 billion pounds paid for gas and oil exploration to foreign companies every single year. Remembering bus scheme is over three years for 450 million. Considering house value 
considering the fines we're going to have to pay if we do nothing, considering the environmental costs and the financial impacts of that, considering the cost of the taxpayer and the individual, no. Heat pumps aren't too expensive. They are too much upfront cost, but I think the government could and should do even more about this to help all homes become heat pump ready. In truth, the one thing we can't afford to do is nothing. So share this video with your local MP who probably doesn't know this information and help renew the heating industry.